Your attention is priceless. And where our attention goes reveals what we are encouraging. What you further encourage becomes the concept of what you hold of yourself, made up of beliefs, and or the concept that you hold of your world, again, made up of beliefs. And as we've been discussing over the last few weeks, your true essence is formless, awareness. And I like to look at it like this. There is awareness and what you are aware of. Acknowledge. You are aware beyond beliefs. You exist. You are the invisible, formless self, I. And then we may look around our world and we see a person or an item on our agenda, let's say an entrepreneur. It's to reach out to five prospective clients today. And then we all of a sudden we are aware of, we are aware of a belief. And that belief could be, I don't want people to reject me for if they do, it means unworthiness. Or one may look at another in the room and say, they're not interested in me or something like that. These are beliefs. They are Subconscious beliefs brought in front of awareness. You are awareness. That's you. And these beliefs are brought to your awareness. Awareness and awareness of. Awareness of beliefs identified with in your mind. So where do these beliefs exist? They exist nowhere but the mind. Now here comes the power How are you going to see the opportunity of talking to the person you desire or reaching out to the five prospects? Is it from a past belief perhaps identified with before that may have been helpful, however no longer in harmony with your vision? Or are you going to operate from your vision? Just this simple act of awareness. And that's really what this is. An act of awareness. Realizing that you are not the belief. Releases identification to it. And we connect with the person and it goes smoothly. Or we reach out to the five prospects and it goes smoothly. By the way, this conversation was inspired by training I hosted on Tuesday for a large sales organization, so I trust you'll find this valuable as well for your initiatives. Do you see how valuable your attention is? It's priceless because it gives you, or more accurately put, you give yourself whatever you desire in this world, and this attention, which seems to be controlled by subconscious beliefs, is actually controlled by your awareness. That's because you, as the formless self, are higher than the mind and the beliefs in mind. You see, operating from one belief, you exist. And by you, I'm not referring to the body, nor the mind. I'm talking about your formless self awareness. You exist in one reality. And then through operating from how you'd like it to be, you experience a different reality. This is the power of awareness. By operating from awareness, you're actually already doing it. We're just bringing awareness to it, no pun intended. You can change your subconscious mind beliefs like garments and thus direct where your attention goes. Now, from the repetition of doing this again and again, you regenerate your belief system. You have a mind full of beliefs, whether we're aware of them or not. Not fixed, only worn lightly in mind to experience life the way you want. And you can change them whenever you'd like. And so now, talking to the person is easy. Reaching out to the five prospects is easy because you now believe that it is. What makes you any different, the formless self, I, any different than somebody else 
who's able to operate from the premise of it's easy. It's the beliefs we identify with. This is what I mean by your attention is priceless. You may have heard the saying, energy flows where your attention goes. And this is true. You give life to the world by your awareness. And as mentioned, your awareness governs where your attention goes. So where are you giving life to? Is it what you love? And if not, where else? So here's a brief recap of what we've been discussing over the last weeks, which is the same thing said differently. Number one, body and world are expressions of mind. Number two, mind is an expression of awareness. Number three, awareness is formless and this is truly you. Number four, you, as in awareness, consciously form the contents, the beliefs in your subconscious mind via imagination. Number five, the subconscious mind follows the instructions and automatically expresses the contents in and as a body. And you can change them whenever you'd like. They are not as fixed as one might think. Number six, body and world moves automatically to carry out its instructions by law. So simplified, you create your own reality. You have all the power. And as you remain aware, you become even lighter with your beliefs. And then experientially, you understand beyond theoretical understanding. Like I always say, beliefs are like garments and you can wear different ones and put them away when done playing whatever role. Like, for example, I haven't worn a crisp white collar shirt for a while, but I do have them in my closet for the occasion. I actually have a number of plain black t-shirts because that's what I like to wear most of the time. And I like nice shoes and jeans, yet I rarely dress up for consulting in a white collar shirt, unless I feel it suits the taste. So I do it as the mood arises. This is how beliefs are. Garments worn to suit the taste of the theater, the role being played. And the way I facilitate this to change them is by stimulating imagination through desire. So in relation to the Example of five prospects a day. One of the ways we stimulate the desire is by recalling why we do what we do. Now, if you're a student of my mind mapping program, you know that I'm a fan of the format learning model. The format learning model was designed by Bernice McCarthy, and it is a conceptual model that facilitates optimal learning and teaching. And so there are four aspects. First, we have why. So this is a question one might ask when consuming information. Why is this important to me? An emotional why. Then we have what. What is referring to the theoretical or a conceptual breakdown, which explains whatever topic is being discussed, like we did earlier with the six parts, which were further elaborated on, in the last few weeks videos. Then we have how, as how do you apply this information, whatever information you are engaging with. And by the way, you'll notice I include all of these in my programs and my videos. It serves as both a nice teaching and learning guide. And if you want to know how to apply the model to learning and teaching, I recommend my mind mapping program. I'll link in the description to it. And this is part of my five programs and you can get all of them for a deal. Then we have if, or we could say what if. This is creative, nonlinear, or entrepreneurial thinking, adapting and adopting, as we discussed in Tuesday's video. I'll link in the description to it. So for our intent and purpose today, we are focusing on stimulating desire, just enough to move forward with our initiatives, and then momentum and flow kicks in. 
and then everything happens naturally and automatically from there. What to do and not do happens. You surrender to divine will. It's all done for you, with you, through you, with others, without others, freestyle, it happens. You simply allow the desire to stimulate your imagination. That's the way it is, and it happens. So what I found with myself and others in sales, entrepreneurship, and creative professionals, and even day-to-day -day life, is the why aspect of the format model. As a matter of fact, there's a nice book called Start With Why by Simon Sinek on being an inspiring leader. How great leaders inspire the why in others and what they do and how they do it flows automatically. Again, because they know how to stimulate desire and desire stimulates imagination. And from there, everything happens. So anytime you feel you lack desire in relation to your initiatives, stimulate your desire by asking, what is my why? So in relation to the vision video I created at the start of the year, I have different areas of life. I'll link in the description to it. It could be one or a few or a combination. It's really up to you. Here we do whatever works for ourselves. These areas are spiritual, intellectual, financial, family, career, social, and physical. So personally, my biggest why is this. And it's been this way for a long time. It's a spiritual why. I never want to lose the ability to direct my mind to whatever ends I may desire. If I commit to something, I want to do it unflinchingly. No questions, no looking back, no argument, and move forward with the initiative until it is complete. This to me emotionally gets me going. This is similar to the Napoleon Hill O Divine Providence prayer as follows. He says, O Divine Providence, I ask not for more riches, but more wisdom with which to make wiser use of the riches you gave me at birth, consisting in the power to control and direct my own mind to whatever ends I might desire. So in the Hermetica, the Corpus Hermeticum, it states, Two gifts were bestowed upon humanity. They were mind and speech. This is inner speech or imagination. And these two gifts are equal to immortality. And wise use of these gifts differ us nothing from the immortals. So look around at the world. What we have created. This is how we have used the two gifts. So if I ever lack desire, I stimulate it and my desire stimulates imagination by asking myself, am I making wise use of these two gifts? That's my why. Then I automatically perform the initiatives, the ones I genuinely want to do without further holding myself back. I don't hold myself back anymore. Awareness is self. There's only one cause. I am. And then it's done for me. I've yielded completely to that invisible power and it is done for me from a blissful state of flow. Now for others, the why could be family, financial, or a combination of the seven or whatever categories you'd like that I mentioned earlier. I don't see one way being better than another. I have a client, his why is being an example to his son. And I said, the way to be an example is to do the things you say you are going to do, even if nobody is looking. Again, again, and again, and your son will feel it. You won't even need to explain it to him. He will feel it and will reflect your authenticity. The commitment that we have actually speaks louder than words. When we show up in their presence, that silence we find speaks louder than words. 
So again, discover your why. Reconnect back to it. Allow your desire to stimulate your imagination. And you'll find that you'll automatically do the things that you want to do. And then it becomes a habit, a way of life. So I trust you found this video to be helpful. Let's go ahead and conclude this with an auto-suggestion to further encourage. You could say, O Divine Providence, the Creator of all, Thank you for blessing me with the two gifts of mind and speech to mold and fashion my world in the exact likeness of how I desire it to be. For I transcend all beliefs and imagine things to be a certain way, stimulated by the desire of my heart, and it happens by divine will. If you would like a copy of this mind map, the link is in the description. Thank you very much for watching. I'll talk with you soon. Take care.